Welcome to the Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Now, I don't know about you, but I got a little extra pep in my step tonight because Donald Trump has left the country. <laughs> now, yeah, breathing easy, breathing a little easier. By the way, federal judges, now would be a good time to reinstate that travel ban. <laughs> He'll be flying in. He'll be flying in from a dangerous part of the world. He's, he said some radical stuff. I'm just saying. Extreme, extreme vetting. That's all I'm asking for. <laughs> Just, we don't know where his money comes from. There's so many unknowns. Trump's first stop this weekend was Saudi Arabia, where Trump was greeted on the tarmac by King Solomon. That's nice. Not all royalty will do an airport pickup. <laughs> no. Just, just call me. I'll be circling. Just call me. The Saudis know the quickest way to Trump's heart, of course, is through his ego. So they put up Trump-themed billboards everywhere. This is true, including one of his tweets. Great to be in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Looking forward to the afternoon and evening ahead. Hashtag POTUS abroad. <laughs> they, even, they even put up one of his tweets on the welcome sign. Welcome to Riyadh. Rosie O'Donnell's a fat pig. <laughs> Surprised they did that. It's not halal. That sign's not halal now. And they projected his face five stories high onto the wall of his hotel. That way, no, no, you have to, because that way, if he gets lost, he could find his way back. <laughs> now, back when Obama made the same trip, Trump tweeted, many people saying it was wonderful that Mrs. Obama refused to wear a scarf in Saudi Arabia, but they were insulted. We have e -noof enemies. <laughs> e -noof. So it was something of a surprise when Melania emerged from Air Force One also without a scarf. But she cleverly drew attention away from her head by wearing one of her husband's WWE belts. <laughs> oh, she'll atomic, atomic, she'll atomic <laughs> drop you. Do not. She's like, no. boom! <laughs> Diamond cutter. <laughs> and then, of course, there's the bow. Somehow, the Saudi king always gets the U.S. president to bow. It happened to George W. Bush in 2008 and Obama in 2009. Trump gave Obama a ton of grief for that, so there was no way Trump was going to bow when King Solomon gave him the medal. Okay, here he is going from the knees, trying not to, and the bow, and a curtsy. And, and, a, little, and a little curtsy at the end there. Very nice. Thank you. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. You got a bow to get the thing around your neck. Yeah. But it is kind of a dirty trick by the Saudi king. First of all, he's short. <laughs> Second, he holds the medal down here. He's like, come and get it. Come limbo. Limbo lower. How low can you go? <laughs> now, uh, after arriving, the president then took part in a traditional celebratory sword dance called the Arda. And here's Trump. Sword flopping to the beat right there. <laughs> I'm not here to cause no trouble. I'm just here to do the Middle East shuffle. <laughs> you can, there you go, there you go. Just kind of, just kind of doing it. Just kind of doing it. We can hear what he's, you can kind of hear what he's thinking. You kind of hear what he's thinking. He's going, okay, Donnie, this is weird. <laughs> but get through it. They'll let you meet the genie. It's going to be fun. <laughs> I'm going to wish for all the wishes. And uh, it's hard to tell what song those guys are dancing to. Jim, can we turn up the sound a little bit? It's raining men. <laughs> but not everyone looked that comfortable at the party. Here's Steve Bannon realizing these aren't the kind of men in white robes he's used to. <laughs> it wasn't. What? We joke because we love. It wasn't, uh, <laughs> it wasn't all swordplay. Trump also helped at the opening ceremony for the Global Center for Combating Extremist Ideology by laying hands upon this glowing orb. <laughs> Whatever qualities that magical sphere confers, eternal youth is not one of them. <laughs> Fellas, if I may, you need to work on your not looking like supervillain skills. <laughs> Look at that. It looks like... It looks like... It looks like 
They're activating the undersea robot to emerge from its volcano base and <laughs> kill Aquaman. <laughs> Jim, can we pull out to see who else is there? Saruman and Gargamel. There you go. Yeah, there you are. Of course, I don't know what that does. I don't know what that what what they're doing. Yeah, I don't either. Of course, <laughs> I'd be surprised if you did know. If you knew, yeah, that, I'd be a little worried. I know. Of course, the centerpiece of Trump's Saudi visit was his speech to the Muslim world, which he apparently gave in Crazy Ahmed's Chandelier Emporium. <laughs> Trump had a lot of kind words about his host region. Saudi Arabia is home to the holiest sites in one of the world's great faiths. All over the world, people dream of walking through the ruins of Petra, in Jordan. Iraq was the cradle of civilization and is a land of natural beauty. The entire region is at the center of the key shipping lines of the Suez Canal, the Red Sea, and the Straits of Hormoz. That's a hard sell. <laughs> it really feels like he's trying to push a timeshare on the Euphrates. <laughs> Each unit comes with a plunge pool and gym access. Act now, and we'll throw in this free glowing orb. <laughs> I don't know what it does. <laughs> Trump also laid out how he was going to help Saudi Arabia. This landmark agreement includes the announcement of a $110 billion Saudi-funded defense purchase and we will be sure to help our Saudi friends to get a good deal from our great American defense companies. Yeah, also, we're running a deal. If you buy 10 F-35 fighter jets today, bring in your fully punched card, we'll throw in a free sub. <laughs> a nuclear sub. <laughs> Donald Trump's not the only one who enjoyed his trip to Saudi Arabia. So did Commerce Secretary and Crypt Keeper's fun brother, Wilbur Ross. The other thing that was fascinating to me, there was not a single hint of a protester anywhere there during the whole time we were there. Not one guy with a, a bad placard. Yeah, it's so great. No protesters anywhere in Saudi Arabia. Like, nobody, nobody holding up a bad placard or anything. Of course, it's pretty hard to hold up anything when you don't have any hands. <laughs> now, I know that sounds dark. I don't want to exaggerate that Saudi Arabia is so repressive they cut off for protesters' hands. That's stereotypical, and I apologize. In fact, political dissent in Saudi Arabia is punishable by decapitation. <laughs> so Saudi political chants are a lot tamer than here. What do we want to keep our noggins? When do we want it? Whatever's good with you. Great job, Chief. No placards. Look, we're not holding up. 